My name's Huey. Uh, I play in a band called Fun Loving Criminals, and uh, I do lots of other stuff too. I like to think of myself as an opportunist, which is uh, kind of like a capitalist without a plan. Uh, I got a job at the BBC recently doing a radio show. In my life, everything's centered around the guitar. Everything started with this thing. It's kind of singular, I think, that a person who can just start off playing a little bit of... can go sell 10 million records and have a job at the BBC. And it's just, it's, it's amazing to me that I got this far doing this because I'm fairly thick, you know? Well, in the first time, I, I got freaked out by the guitar. I must have been about 11 years old. It was one of the school assemblies. And this kid comes up and starts playing Jumpin' Jack Flash uh, on the guitar. And all the hairs in the back of my neck stood up, and all the hairs on my arms stood up, and I got a woody. And I was like, wow, what's this? You know? And ever since then, I wanted to play guitar. I was bored with school a lot. And uh, believe it or not, I, was, I was, took a test early on, and I was apparently gifted. So I would go to these private schools in Manhattan, I get thrown out two weeks later for knocking some kid out. I just didn't have a real good, uh, good discipline level at that point. And I knew that school wasn't the thing that was going to get me to where I wanted to be, especially after I'd heard that guy play the guitar. I always used to love music when I was a kid, you know, buying records, putting the headphones on, closing my eyes, and the movies would start in my head. So it was always something I really liked. And I had a friend named Peter Katashevsky who was living in the same building as me. He was a little older than me, and he was a guitar player. And he's like, you know, if you want me to show you, you know, the blues scale or whatever like that, you know, I'll show you the guitar thing, and you can just take it from there. My formidable years when I was a kid, I grew up, I was a little troublemaker. And I think that came from me just being frustrated with uh, not being challenged in school enough and, and not really being taken seriously to the point where uh, my opinion I felt was valued. Going to, like, jail when I was a kid really sobered me up. I realized that I wasn't as big and tough as I thought I was. There were a lot of more bigger and tougher guys there. I realized at that point that I wasn't cut out to be an arch criminal. You know, I didn't have it in me to, uh, you know, and, and everybody wants to, you hear about nowadays, everybody wants to be a gangster, everybody's carrying a knife and all that kind of stuff. You know, I, I just knew in my heart that I wasn't that kind of person. So I knew that that wasn't the road for me. I was definitely given an option and I chose, I chose to, to serve my country uh, in the Marine Corps. I'm still very disciplined from being in the Marines, and I, I draw on a lot of that experience to help me through my everyday life. When I was in the service, I was given an opportunity to read a lot, and I did, and I you know, kind of educated myself in a lot of ways and read a lot of books and realized that there was more uh, to life in the world than I thought there was. I was lucky enough throughout the years to find uh, a good friend named Fast, who's still in front of criminals criminals with me, and he's a great musician, he plays like 19 instruments, and he and I became flatmates, and then we decided that we were going to start a band together. As that went by over about a year and a half, people kept talking about us in New York, and we didn't have no idea. We didn't make demo tapes, we didn't do photos, we didn't try to get a record deal. And we played this one gig, and some guy came up to us and handed us a business card that said, President, CEO of EMI. And he says, you guys want to make a record? It was fruitful, but I think I would have done it even if we didn't have a record deal, and we weren't making money and we weren't touring and stuff like that. It was something I wanted to do anyway. This little piece of wood and metal saved my ass. I think without this it would probably have been like, you know, something that had bullets in it I'd be holding. Yeah, I, I probably would have stayed in the Marines or, uh, or uh, you know, done something crazy, you know. As far as regrets go, it's kind of like the Frank Sinatra song, My Way. And uh, I heard that song when I was about nine or ten years old, and I memorized the lyrics because something about it was really poignant. And if anybody's familiar with that song, it's, he did it his way, you know. And regrets he's had a few, but not enough to mention. My plan is no plan, and it's always been that way. And I think that's the greatest part about being an opportunist, I guess, is what they call it. You know, you got to live life in the moment. You got to enjoy yourself when you can. And when I say enjoy yourself, I mean enjoy yourself. Enjoy being in your own skin and, and enjoy the, the things that you have to offer to other people. You know, and that's, that's the key.